Hi, I'm Allie, a test prep tutor and strategist at TestGeek. You've probably heard of the SAT and the PSAT, but what are the differences between these two tests? We're going to cover everything you need to know. Generally speaking, the SAT is a college entrance exam. It's an exam that you take to gain entrance to colleges and universities in the United States. And the PSAT is its practice or preliminary version. And that's actually where the P in PSAT comes from. There's several different versions of the PSAT. So there's the PSAT 8-9, which is taken by eighth or ninth grade students, the PSAT 10 taken by 10th graders, and then the regular PSAT is taken during the junior year of high school. And when someone just says PSAT, they're probably referring to this one that you take during your junior year. All of these versions of the PSAT, as well as the SAT, are administered by College Board, which is an independent nonprofit organization. The SAT is exclusively and fundamentally a college entrance exam. It is meant to test your college readiness and tell colleges how ready you are to attend their school. It can also be used to help you gain other scholarship dollars. So outside of the National Merit Scholarship Program, you may find independent scholarships or scholarships within the college or university that you're applying, and oftentimes they'll be looking for test scores. So you'll wanna be sending your real SAT scores and not a PSAT score to qualify for these types of scholarships. What about the actual material that's tested on the SAT and the PSAT? Are there any big differences? Well, not a ton. Um, the underlying content of both tests is essentially the same. Now, one difference you will find is on the math section. Um, so College Board is accounting for a difference in academic math knowledge over time. You're learning new math topics as you move from eighth grade up to your junior year. And so you will find that there are some more advanced math topics um, on the different versions of the PSAT, as well as the SAT versus the regular PSAT. And this also changes a little bit of the number of questions and the time um, required for the PSAT and the SAT. The PSAT is 165 minutes and you have 139 questions to answer. And the SAT is 15 minutes longer, so it's 180 minutes and it's 154 questions. So the real SAT is a little bit longer um, and has a few more questions than the PSAT. All in all, these two tests, the PSAT and the SAT are very similar. And this is really good news because any time you put into studying for the PSAT is essentially you studying for the SAT. And so this is a nice way to kind of consolidate any tutoring that you're doing, any test prep that you're doing, go ahead and study for the PSAT, um, especially if you have a high test taking aptitude and you think you may be eligible to qualify as a National Merit Scholar, put in all that work before the PSAT and you've essentially done some studying already for the SAT. Let's talk a little bit about score ranges. The PSAT is scored from 320 to 1520, and each section is gonna be 160 to 760 points, whereas the SAT is scored on a range of 400 to 1600, and each section is 200 to 800 points. I'll often hear from students who already have their PSAT scores, and they wanna know what their real SAT score is going to be. One of the best ways to figure this out is to look at the percentile. So let's say you scored a 1350 on the PSAT. That'd be a great score. And that would put you in the 94th percentile on the PSAT. So then you could look up percentiles for the SAT for the year that you took the test. And in this case, the 94th percentile would um, equate to about a 1400 on the SAT. So that's a pretty fair bet that if you don't do any additional studying, um, you kind of have a similar performance on test day for the SAT, you'd probably get a 1400 on the SAT. This is really helpful information as you start to put together a plan for test prep and college admissions. Let's say you know that you need to get a 1500 or maybe just a 1450 to get into your top schools. Well, with this information, you know that you're probably gonna need to increase your score about 50 to 100 points. Um, whereas maybe you're looking at schools that you can be pretty competitive at with a 1250 or a 1300. Um, and in that case, you probably don't need to be putting a lot of time into studying for the test. And instead, you could spend that time on crafting the perfect essay or finishing out your grades um, for that semester really strong. Um, so this is just really good information to have as you start to put together your test prep and college admissions plan. All in all, these two tests are very similar. Any work that you put into studying for one is going to be work that will pay off for the other tests as well. Thanks so much for joining me. If you're looking for more content like this, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can also find us at testgeek.com forward slash blog.